The 180 degree rule is one of the most important rules of filmmaking. The purpose of the rule is to keep the viewer spatially oriented and maintain continuity editing. It's one of the most basic guidelines, but for some reason it's consistently broken, particularly in poorly made films. In this video, I'll be explaining the basics of the 180 degree rule, what happens when it's broken, and how to properly break it. Before we get into how to properly break the rule, we should probably explain what the rule is. Let's say you have two characters in a scene, represented by these spheres. We establish that the blue ball is on the left, and the red ball is on the right. Showing this setup gives the viewer an understanding of where things are in the space shown. The camera is only allowed to move within the 180 degree section marked by the green semicircle. Blue starts talking, so the camera would move, still showing blue to be on the left side of the screen. Red starts talking, so the camera moves again, keeping red on the right side of the screen. Any camera angle within that range is perfectly fine to use. Here's a quick example of the rule being followed. This clip from Step Brothers sets up the character placement and, although it's edited a little more than necessary, it shows different angles within the established space. The rule is broken when the camera shoots on the other side of the line. Breaking the rule can momentarily disorient the viewer and disrupt the flow of the editing. Earlier we established that the blue is on the left and red is on the right. Let's imagine red is delivering a line. Then we cut to blue for a reaction shot. Whoa, what happened? Blue isn't where we established it to be. The rule has just been broken, and the audience is slightly disoriented. In this clip from Hulk, we establish placement of the characters, then follow that placement before jumping the line repeatedly. Then we get this lovely edit. Yikes, who okayed that? Not only does this destroy any flow in the editing, but it oftentimes makes the filmmakers seem incompetent. So far we've only talked about using the rule for scenes involving two characters. What happens when you have three or more characters in a scene? Well for the most part you do the same thing, only this time implementing head turns comes into play. Look at this iconic sequence from Pulp Fiction. We establish the placement of the characters before moving into an exchange with Jules and Brad. Then Jules directs his attention to Flock of Seagulls. He's not given a proper name, so Flock of Seagulls it is. He gets interrupted by Marvin and Jules' head turns. A shot reverse shot between Jules and Marvin happens, then we cut back to the guy on the couch. Despite shifting focus to another character twice, the audience is never confused where everyone is. The rule also covers character movement, particularly in relation to edits. Essentially, when filming or editing, you want to keep the character moving in the same direction you've established them moving. Having a character exit to the left, then in the next shot having them enter from the right creates, you guessed it, spatial disorientation. In editing, you want to follow the line of action to create a seamless string of shots. Of course, the 180 degree rule isn't a hard and fast rule. It can be broken, but requires some ingenuity on the part of the filmmakers. A hard break in the rule can sometimes be intentional. Here the rule is broken in this scene from The Shining. The placement of the characters is established, but instead of following the rule, Kubrick crosses the line. This is a deliberate choice made to create light confusion in the viewer. As the scene plays out, Jack starts to piece together that he's speaking with the ghost of the Overlook Hotel's former owner. The line is continuously crossed, keeping the audience slightly disoriented. Another way to bypass the rule is through the movement of the characters. Let's look at the balcony scene from Superman the movie. We start the scene establishing Lois to be on the left and Superman on the right. Then the characters cross one another, allowing Superman to appear on the left side of the screen without confusing the viewer. Similarly, the camera can revolve around the characters to ease the audience into new spatial territory. I was having a difficult time thinking of a specific example where a camera rotation is used followed by a shot reverse shot, but this sequence from The Dark Knight should effectively illustrate the point. If you start with the Joker on the left and Rachel on the right, then rotate the camera around the characters, you could then show Rachel on the left and Joker on the right. Okay, last superhero movie example, I promise. The final trick I'll show is the introduction of a new element. It can be a character, an explosion, cell phone ringing on the counter, anything that gets the attention of the characters. There's a decent example in the popular internet meme, B-Movie. Vanessa and Barry are sitting at the table having a conversation. Ken enters the scene, and the camera jumps over the line, reversing Vanessa and Barry's placement. Before I end the video, let's do a quick recap. The 180 degree rule is used to keep the viewer aware of the placement of characters and objects in the environment. The rule is also used for continuity editing. Breaking the rule can cause disorientation and is typically advised against. The rule can be broken through character and camera movement, element introduction, or through purposeful line jumping. Like I said earlier in the video, it's important to observe the rule, but it's also important to know when and how to break it. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know this is a little bit of a shorter episode for Silver Screen Academy. I do want to start covering filmmaking techniques. I think to really have a good understanding of what film is, you need to have an understanding of how films are made. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Be sure to follow me over on Facebook at Mario Vanessa YouTube, and I will see you later.